yours alone, you alone are worthy of all praise. Well, greetings. It is, uh, as always, happy Sabbath. <laughs> A special honour to stand before you to stand before all creation, all the people of the world, and my God, who I love and declare as my God, the God of Israel, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Maker of heaven and earth, creator of all things, I salute you. And I come before you to speak the word, before these people to speak the word, that your truth and your life may be known, that you may be glorified, that you may be exalted, to be lifted up to a place above all other things, the rightful place, Lord, not that you are ever not in that place, but our imaginings, the minds of men, we bring you down, we bring ourselves to a place of exaltation, we bring ourselves up, Lord, that's not where, that's not where we need to be. Where we need to be is at the foot of the cross, at the foot of your son, Jesus Christ, whose life was poured out for us, that we may live, that we may reclaim an inheritance, that we may be return, we may return, be redeemed to you, our God, our sovereign Lord, our place of refuge, our strength, our salvation, that your joy and truth may be known in a world that is parched, that is hungry, that is crying out for a saviour, for a redemption, Lord for a belief, a way of walking, a way of living, a way of occupying our time, that it may be useful, that it may be valuable, that it may have wealth, real wealth, not the, not the trinkets of mankind, not the clothes that we wear, not the words that we say, not the cars that we drive or the houses that we live in, but in you we can be more. And that's what we want, Lord, that's what we hunger for, the separation, the brokenness where we are apart from you, to be made whole, to be brought together, Lord. And in that, there is only one way. There is only one name that can be said, only one authority and power that can be called on to make that name, make that connection. And that connection is through the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Anointed One, Jesus who was spoken about in the Old Testament for thousands of years, who the Lord proclaimed through his prophets and through his people, through his actions and through his works, that he may be known, that he may eventually be born into this world, cast out by those that would, should have received him, that the doors may be opened and heaven's gates be made accessible to every living soul, to every person, every man, woman and child can choose to accept Jesus as their Lord and Saviour and in so doing walk in a new relationship, be given a new heart under the new covenant. With you, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, as I come before you, I ask that your word is spoken and not mine, that I die to myself, that there is less of me and more of you in my speaking. I've been so blessed in recent days, in just the last few hours, to have been in fellowship with brothers and sisters who are seeking, who are falling on the floor in prayer, calling upon your Holy Spirit to endow them and to rebuild them, Lord. And I call that same way, not for me, not for me, but for you, for your glory, for your truth to be known, for your word to be proclaimed, that the people of this world may turn from their path, the path to destruction, to a path of life, and life abundant. I pray this in the name and by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Wow. Yes, what a few days. From the... Uh, <sighs> depths of recovery and death to a place of life and blessing. I, I, 
find it hard sometimes to communicate. And I've, I've been speaking this week with some of my friends from before I came to Christ, people that know me very well, people that are close to me, closer than, than many people, even now, even people in the church, they, 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 they accept our new creation, they accept our new bodies, and the, the old is gone. And the truth of the matter is, yes, in me, that life is, is, is a previous life, a prior life, a different chapter, a different page, but it's still part of me and who I am. As much as I want to say I'm no longer British, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a child of Israel, I fly under the New Kingdom flag, a white flag of surrender, I serve only the Lord my God, there are still markers and creases and things upon me as part of my DNA, a part of my language, a part of my expression, which, uh, which reach back into my birth the place of my birth, the northwest of England and those people who are around me and those terrifying dark days. And I've spoken to a few of those, a couple of those this week, and I've spoken of the things of God. And there are many of them, I wouldn't even know where to begin or how to begin. And one, my blessed sister Julia in Cambodia, uh, at one stage she was like, Michael, or Jacko, my old name, stop it, stop it, stop it. And I said to her, in all truth, I can no more put down the truth that Jesus has saved my life as I could remove an, a limb, remove my arm and set it down aside for an hour. It's part of me, it's essential to my being and understanding that Jesus Christ has saved my life that the good news has permeated every part of my being, has led me to repent of my sins, led me to lay down myself and to pick up something new, something better. So I can walk in relationship with him and also spread that message into other parts of the world. It's the commission, it's what we're called to do as believers, not just to sit and watch. Too many voyeurs uh, uh, are passing and enduring as much as can be work of the enemy, it will pass away. It has been overcome. It's to convert the people of the world into voyeurs, into watchers. Every car accident, the traffic slows to a crawl. But people try and look in through the windows. What are they hoping to see? Decapitation? Blood? Tears? Agony? But it's like we're driven by this need to watch, to see. And it's such a vile twisting of scripture. Yes, we're called to watch. Yes, taste and see that the Lord is good. Get in creation. Mangare Mountain in the background here. We may climb it as, as part of this service. I don't know. The swifts and the swallows playing. In the grasslands around me, the smell of the fresh air, the vistas, open vistas over Manukau Harbour, the island. Trees. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Seek Him. Seek Him and find Him. Ask Him, Lord, cry out to Him. And He will hear you. The gospel I preach is a is a is a stumbling block to the Jews who rejected Christ, who've lived for 2,000 years, building themselves up, re-establishing, clinging to their law and clinging to their ritual. He crucified the Saviour, the Messiah, the coming King, the one that was spoken of in Isaiah. You know, every book of the Bible in the Old Testament, the Talmud, speaks of the coming King the coming Messiah, and just because he wasn't robed in greatness and leading the heavenly armies to, to crush the empire of Rome, 
for you that he spoke different words and of different ways of God's truth and God's creation and the kingdom and the will of the Father rejected as was written tortured as was written crucified as was written read Isaiah 53 it's not today's text there's a beautiful um, um, interview thing on, on YouTube you can look it up and it's a young Jewish uh, former Jewish still Jewish uh, believer and he goes into Jerusalem and he goes amongst the Israelites and he says to them have you read Isaiah 53 and they go no and do you know why because it, this was a, a regular part of, of, of uh, Talmudic Jewish ritual and study as every book of the Bible should be part of God's breathed word into creation and they don't like that, but they don't like this bit. They can't stand for this bit. Who could have believed what we have heard? He makes them read it. He makes the Jews read this. And to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before the Lord like a young plant, <coughs> whose roots are in parched ground and had no beauty, no majesty to draw our eyes. No, he wasn't robed like they thought he should be. No grace to make us delight in him. His form disfigured, lost all the likeness of a man. His beauty changed beyond human semblance. He was despised. He shrank from the sight of men. Tormented and humbled by suffering, we despised him. We held him of no account, a thing from which men turn away their eyes. Yet on himself he bore our sufferings, our torments he endured. While he counted them smitten by God, struck down by disease and misery, but who was pierced for our transgressions, tortured for our iniquities. The chastisement he bore is health for us. By his scourging, by his stripes we are healed. We had all strayed like sheep. Each of us had gone his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. He was afflicted. He submitted to be struck down. He did not open his mouth and read scripture, read the New Testament, what happened to Jesus. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, like a ewe that is done before shearers. Without protection, without justice, he was taken away. And who gave a thought to his fate, how he was cut off from the world of living men, stricken to the death of my people's transgression? He was assigned a grave with the wicked, a burial place among the refuse of mankind. Though he had done no violence and spoken no word of treachery, yet the Lord took thought for his tortured servant and healed him, who had made himself a sacrifice for sin. So shall he enjoy a long life and see his children's children, and in his hand the Lord's cause shall prosper. And making the Jews read that, he says to them, who do you think they're talking about? And all but one of the ones in the interview, you can see it. You know it flashes across their mind, the first answer, because the Holy Spirit is within each of us. They're still good people. They still want what we want to be redeemed. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one who bore the sins for our transgressions, as a young man in the interview po points out. Later on in Isaiah, it says it must come before the Messiah must come before this temple is destroyed for a second time. AD 79, the Romans destroyed the temple and left not a few stones standing on top of another, not one stone standing on top of another. Just the wall where the Jewish people wail to this day and lament. Christ came, lived, preached, blessed given up, given over, spoke not a word while he was convicted, tortured, beaten, mocked, shamed, crucified. The only words that was pointed out by a preacher, Jeff, from uh, the UK, Community Church, my hometown, pointed out that on the way to the cross, on the way to the cross, on the way to crucifixion, as Jesus, from the moment he was convicted to the moment he died, 
all that came out of his mouth was the blessing of others he blessed Simon the man from Cyrene who, who carried the cross for a while something we've all got to do he blessed the Roman soldiers forgive them Lord they know not what they're doing he blessed the thief upon the cross beside him yet spoke not one word for himself not one word for his suffering you see that's who God is that's what God's love does it supersedes, it transcends all other love, you may love you father and mother you may love you brother and sister you may love your wife your daughters, your sons you may love the hills and the trees and the valleys, you may love your cars your game of rugby or your sports at the weekend you may love your close to it, we can approximate, we can come closer, we can live an ordered life, we can eschew the things of this world, we can give our whole life to him and to the work and the life of others, and we can approximate God's love. Mother Teresa can approximate God's love. And I pray that into the lives of the people that I know grew up in a place that was pretty dark compared to this. I thought, and I've spoken this with others, that I was the black sheep. I was the one getting out, the black sheep, the weirdo, the strange one, the one that didn't fit in, the one that was always on the edge. The truth is, and it's no, is it a boast? It's a joy to know and that you come to him, but it's not a joy to know in the fact that you stepped out and people you cared for and loved and wanted to put your arms around and wanted to say, there has to be more than this, are still doing that same thing, they're still in that same whirlwind of deceit and mockery, and drudgery, to tell them that I was the white sheep, sorry, you're the black sheep. I love you, but you're misguided, and it might be misguided by, by the Catholic Church. I didn't do that, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, I can hear it, I can hear it, I can hear it, I can hear it. And I say to you, there's more in here than there is in all the other things. In all the things of this world. And you know, those of you that know me, I've had the big jobs, I've got the brains, I've the strength the ability, the quick wittedness to make it in this world, to do the same as you. Every time, every time, and I pray times and again, and I pray for you and your life, I'll choose these, because it's great. It doesn't go away, the problem.
difficulties and tragedies. In fact, I've been through more stuff since I came to Christ than I, I ever could have coped with beforehand. And most of you will know, or some of you will know, exactly just how much of the stuff that is. But I'll trust in the Lord and he'll give me strength. I'll seek the word, his word, his guidance. And I'll try. And it isn't always right. And I do go off on my own way. But the more I see him, the more I trust him, the more I find myself in places like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall want for nothing. He maketh me and leadeth me to lie down in green pastures by still waters. He, refreshes, he restores my soul. He sets me upon paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yes, even if I walk in a valley as dark as the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. His rod and his staff are a comfort to me. He anoints my head with oil. He sets a table before me in front, in the presence of my enemies. And it's not guaranteed. And I know if I stay like this, then surely, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to be there. I've not even met some of you, and I want you to be there. I want to do like I did last night and put my hands around, my arm around a total stranger and love him like a brother and love him more than I love a brother. Know that I will be singing in steps and paths of righteous with him forever, for eternity. That we'll see each other. Remember when we met that day, just put our arms around each other? I didn't realise it was you, and they would say, yeah, I didn't realise it was you. I'm so glad we met Jesus. <sighs> Continuing our series. Book of Genesis chapter 1, <coughs> verse 20 onward. God said, Let the waters teem with countless living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the vault of heaven. God then created great sea monsters and all living creatures that move and swarm in the waters according to their kind, and every kind of bird, and God saw that it was good. So he blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase. Fill the waters of the seas and let the birds increase on land. Evening came and morning came. The fifth day. If I could put a title on today's message, it would be abundance. We talked last time about the unusualness in terms of the biblical story of creation that the day three creation of the world and all the plants that are in it comes before day four where the stars and the lights of heaven the sun and the moon are placed in their orbits and paths I wanted to get across to you just how special creation is. How special the world that we live in is. Yes, it's cursed. We can read that later. Yes, this is Earth V2 or point two, two point oh, whatever you want to call it. And yes, it is heart-numbingly, mind-crushingly, 
breathstealingly beautiful. It is abundant. There's no place you can go where life isn't. Oh yes, well, it's very... I've been to the deserts of Saudi Arabia. I've walked on places that look like Mars. And yet there's a bush. I've flown across Greenland and seen the etchings of the Lord. You mean? Great glaciers moving and working. Great places. Oh, Praise God. the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> How are you doing? Good, good. I've got to revive from church. Good, good. Good. Yeah, good. Service was 10 o'clock this morning. I didn't make it because I was preaching. Oh, oh, okay. I'm going to leave you to it. Oh, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. I'm going to Oh, I'm just going to go down to some script down. The good on it. Okay, yeah, when I came here, I thought. You know, Tara, welcome. You see how God good God is. Don't worry. Abundance of life. So, I'm several miles away from places that I'd normally be. I've known God make connections with people, even people outside the church from, you know, from different continents. The thing that I noticed most about when I first came to Christ after I was baptized, that rather than running into people, I started to run, walk in sync with them. It's a blessing of the Lord that he has his hand, those he has his hand upon are never out of place. There's no coincidence, coincidences, you're never out of touch. And he will make paths for you in the wilderness that will amaze. Will amaze you. You'll be thinking, I remember before when it was like, ah, blah, 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 ah. And then now it's like, hey. And I've been in the gangs and on the fringes. I've run with the pack on the fringes. There's nothing like being a son of God. There's nothing like being a, a disciple of Jesus. And I don't say that, that oh, that makes me in the right and you're wrong. It just, it just, Amazing. I know, it's something you want to share. Not like giving up cigarettes or oh, the worst thing. But something that's like new life. This world is so precious and so amazing. And we tend to treat it like it's just like one of the things that passes us by. 
like everything else in creation and here in the Bible it says no 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 God made this first and what I spoke of last week about having faith is accepting the impossible what seems impossible to man is commonplace to God the crucible of humanity of creation was put together before there were stars in the sky this place was separate God held it for his reasons even if it's just to remind us of how special this is even this cursed version even v V2.0 it says in the Bible we can't imagine what heaven will be like what Eden would have been like the original creation what it what, what, what would be like when he comes again when he puts all things to right we'll find out next week about when the animals of the land came and mankind himself about dominion about authority about how these things were placed against us my wife is a vegetarian because she she hates the idea of animals suffering she watches videos where cows cry before they're killed my cousin <coughs> used to live in the countryside in, the, in, in England in the Lake District one of the most beautiful places on earth relatively because uh, the desert's beautiful and she could one of the reasons she left or they had to leave was because she couldn't stand the cry of the lambs not the silence of the lambs but the cry of the mothers not the lambs the mothers the ewes when they took the lambs from them for slaughter the lamb chops lamb ribs and lamb steaks and all the other yummy stuff the ewes cry they cry with a heartfelt cry of a mother that speaks to you of sorrow and loss and that is part of the curse that is part of the the way when mankind left Eden and man left Eden and began to dwell in this this place in this version in this reality those things would be set against us and set in our hearts to try us cursed cursed by God and instead of the curse like Jesus cursing the fig tree and it dying this is a curse of contestation of suffering and trial but in its nature in its core and its center of course is the fact that it's beautiful amazing it's made by God the seas Abundant. I was speaking only yesterday about the Cod Wars in the 1970s. How the Europe, Spain and the UK, they fished and have fished the North Atlantic almost empty of cod. We're talking nets the size of football fields. Dragged in full of fish every time by many fishing boats. And as humans, we can't get it in our, into our heads that if that could be sustained, we would eat forever, abundantly. But let our mentality take it all. Currently, limited by European law, 325,000 tonnes of tuna are removed from the Mediterranean each year. How long do you think that's going to last? go to some tiny village some tiny fishing village well off the beaten track you go into the fish market the stuff that's caught off the beach where you can see the fishing boats go out in the morning and Japanese businessmen could you, could you, could you, could you, could you buy it all 80% of the stock goes halfway round the world we are not sustainably managing our seas just because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't matter. This world is precious. And it 
was set in motion on day five when all those things were placed in it. God said, be fruitful, multiply. And they did, the birds of the sky. It's a subtle message of the Bible, of Jesus' ministry, is the idea of stewardship. And taking authority of the world back. Because God has taken it from Satan. Uh, Satan took it from man, and God has taken Jesus has taken it from Satan, returning to God. That as we walk in Christ, as we walk in relationship with Him, we can become stewards of the world. This world will abundantly feed everybody, every mouth. Even by the worst expectations of population explosion, it will still abundantly feed every mouth. For thousands of years. sustainably careful management it's not, it, it's not rocket science there are 10,000 tons of fish in the sea don't fish 10,000 tons of fish out of the sea leave half of them leave some of them lobsters in the, 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 in the uh, eastern pacific the american coastline used to be so big average but it takes 80 years to grow a lobster that big. Now they're this big. They have to, they have to, you know, oh, does that get a ruler? Is that quite it? Oh, we'll, say, we'll eat it. Sustainable. Sustainability over greed. Power, energy. It's not beyond the ken of men, the, the, the book that show me North Africa and a tiny little black square on North Africa. It's a hundred miles by a hundred miles or whatever. And if we solar panel that, that'll be enough electricity for all of Europe. Oh, but what about signal loss? What are we, well, let's do 200 miles then. Let's double it. That'll be enough to push it around. The sun is pumping out. We receive less than 1%. <laughs> It's pumping out many, many times the amount of power we need to have hot water, jacuzzis, lights, whatever you want. Maybe I'm a little off. Great sea monsters. It's written in the book of Psalms. There are echoes of stories that, that, that exist in indigenous populations around the globe about a time of great confrontation. The Battle of the Titans in the Greek mythology. time of the frost giants in Viking but the, these themes are also in Babylonian stories and ancient American narratives and we see that God in the book of Psalms I believe wrestled with Leviathan so overcame him he's one of the creatures that are actually chained bound to be released upon the last days Rahab, not the prostitute of uh, the book of Joshua, but another monster, a great monster that, that God had to contend with. It's as if in an in brokering creation, in, in, in making creation, in creating creation, in order to create the creation that we live in, the one with free choice and free will, the one with domain and sanctuary, the one with heaven and hell, God had to be tested. <coughs> no. 
were tested, challenged even. It wasn't how he wanted it, but it was necessary in order to allow us the little, you know, things, the things that he cherished, to be free. God had to fight for us. He had to fight for his people and did so. He had to contest with powers and beings and forces unleashed and subdue them. In one book I read, recommended to me by a very blessed pastor in India it's called God of War God at War by Stephen Boyd I think it is no, Gregory Boyd he even posits that, that in the book of Genesis perhaps we tend to think of it coming first because it's first in the Bible in the story of creation those things may have taken place during the story of creation. That the passages that we read from, chapter read from chapter one, are a very concise roadmap on the uh, creation of life. Yet within each of those days, within each of those passages and many unspoken words, some of which are spoken of later. But the idea of a, of a, a man robed in a, with a beard in white, sitting over a table, fashioning an object for 24 hours, and then sitting back, or then saying it's good, and then carrying on with the next object, isn't quite right in terms of the truth, in terms of the unfolding manifestation of the majesty of creation billions of stars eons of geological time dinosaurs monsters powers and authorities how much we're uh, kind of sheltered from what a blessing. I think if we knew even a, a bit of it all, we would be trembling in fear, hidden under rocks, hiding within the clefts of the mountains. No! But God in his majesty, in his timeless Immortal, omniscient, omnipotent being can unfold wonders. <coughs> From Psalm 77, my thoughts went back to times long past. I remembered forgotten years. All night long I was in deep distress. As I lay thinking, my spirit was sunk in despair. Will the Lord reject us forevermore and never again show favour? Has his unfailing love now failed us utterly? Must his promise time and again be unfulfilled? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger withheld his mercies? Has his right hand, I said, lost its grasp? Does it hang powerless, the arm of the Most High? But then, O oh Lord, I call to mind thy deeds. I recall thy wonderful acts in times gone by. I meditate upon thy works and muse on all that thou hast done. O oh God, thy way is holy. What God is so great as our God? Thou art the God who works miracles and has shown the nations thy power with thy strong arm that thou redeem thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw thee, O God. 
They saw they had writhed in anguish. The ocean was troubled to its depths. The clouds poured water, the skies thundered. Thy arrows flashed hither and thither, and sounds of thy thunder was in the whirlwind. Thy lightnings lit up the world. The earth shook and quaked. Thy path was through the sea, thy way through mighty waters, and no man marked thy footsteps. Thou didst guide thy people like a flock of sheep under the hand of Moses and Aaron. Type a song. He says, hopefully. You ever find that? It's always the last pocket you look in. <coughs> Bearing all I stand here before you. All my hurts exposed in the depths of despair. Oh, shit. In the depths of my despair, I cry out to you, make me whole. There is nothing I can do to make you love me more. Nothing I can do to make you love me less. I get on my land, knees and lift my hands to worship and confess. You are the Lord God Almighty, and I fall at your feet. And I Short of your glory, yet you stoop down to make me great, Almighty God. Every day I choose again to love you, to keep your word in my heart. I give it all to you now, Lord, I will surrender, take every part. There is nothing I can do to make you love me more. Nothing I can do to make you love me less. I get on my knees and lift my hands to worship and confess. Sorry, Lord. Do, 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 do. You are the Lord God Almighty, and I fall at your feet. And I fall, ocean short of your glory, yet you stood down to make me great, almighty God. I remember standing with a, a brother in Christ. I didn't get the opportunity to hear Pastor and Dr. Paul Siopi speak in the South Auckland district or anywhere. And uh, I pray you're blessed to hear him talk about through the book of Joshua as I was. And we stood together in after a church service. And all we did was grin. Both of us, like Cheshire cats, ear to ear. We had no words to say. Because nothing can express how good it is to be in the fold, in the flock of the Lord. You don't have to be great. You don't have to be splendid, clever. <laughs> it's hard to explain. If anything, your brokenness makes you more special, cherished, the love. <laughs> 
Hell. So why wouldn't you want the things of God? It's allowed. You see, we can be greedy for so many rubbish things, so many temporary things. We all do it. You know, don't think just because I came to Christ that there's some kind of magic button that switches me off every time. Switches me off every time I see a flash motor. Every time a Jaguar goes past, I don't go, ooh. Yeah? Or even in more difficult situations, you know? Women. I have a most beautiful wife. Attractive. Comely, even. I don't think that there's a time when some fragrant... <sighs> girl walks past that I don't think that my eyes aren't torn or drawn what I'm praying to do and what I'm trying to do and what I'm learning to do is to put them in the right places that's somebody else's daughter somebody else's wife somebody else that God is going to use as a blessing in relationship Don't be so low. And the Jag, nice. Not well, very reliable. What if it uses too much fuel? Uh, one of the pastors in Saudi Arabia. He used to pray <coughs> every day for a yellow Ferrari. And he said that every day when he didn't get a yellow Ferrari, thanks to God is what would I want one for I'd probably crash here oh my uh -oh. a bit of wind noise isn't getting you too much might as well carry on the servant from here. I mean, don't we? Don't we want success? Success defined by this world. Nice house and comfort. Wouldn't it be comfortable? Remember to take it off and pray. <sighs> Practicality. How can it be practical to you in knowing what I've said about the fecundity of the world and wanting people to come closer to the Lord and to know Jesus like I've known them? What's practical? Step one. Ask. The Holy Spirit is within each of us. Every man, woman and child on the planet. Uh, I think Paul Washer points it out right. You know, we'd ask sometimes that, that Jesus be Lord of people's lives. That Jesus made Jesus be Lord of your life. Jesus is Lord of your life, whether you accept it or don't. That's what he's done. He went to the cross. He uh, paid the price. He poured out his blood in perfect sacrifice for the sins of mankind. And he bore that sin, the cup of God's wrath, and died for it. And uh, momentarily, God turned away from it and when he turned back he reached out and lifted him up it's a new life and he can do that for each and every one of you see so when Jesus ascended to heaven he said I will send to you a comforter a wise counsellor and friend and that's what the Holy Spirit is that's what poured out on the apostles at Pentecost and it's not a, a thing of like you have to live a good life you don't have to be particularly good I heard testimony yesterday 
of a guy addicted to crack cocaine for seven years, so lost his family, his, his house, his, everything he had, and was being prayed for in the Brooklyn Tabernacle and turned up on the day as he walked through the door and heard people praying his name and the pastor saying, and we're praying for this man to come in to the church today. God is good and God is God. He's in all things and through all things. He made this, every blade of grass, every leaf of every tree, every moat of wind, the air, the water molecules, everything, all of it, you and me, and we'll find that out next week. And if you want to see it, go and sit somewhere like this and tell me it's not true. Tell me you can't think it, look at it and think, there is something here that's more than. God is in all things and through all things. And what we were talking about, what was uh, preached about just yesterday, was the idea about the density, though. What we can do is have a, a Shekinah presence of God. That's a, a more than, the more than presence of God. And that's done by prayer. That's done by supplication, by... Yeah. Getting down on your knees surrendering all you have taking off your hat and your cloak and calling to him or you can call to him by name our father in heaven oh heavenly you can call to him personally or oh, heavenly father you can call to him by his names of power mighty jehovah el shaddai adonai adonai you can call to him in desperation you can call to him in thanksgiving and rejoicing you can call to him in love you can call to him as the early Christians did with their arms open and their eyes wide because they expected Jesus' return at any moment. You can call to him bowed on your knees, you can be leaping, you can scream it at the top of your voice, Lord of heaven and earth! You can say to him, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's written by the way that men should not pray with their heads covered, not that God can't hear you if you don't. And women should pray with their heads covered because a woman's hair is a glory. It can be a distraction to angels. <clears throat> Not that God can't hear if you don't. But I do tell you, in my experiences, for whatever it's worth, and through what God has shown me, for whatever that's worth, that these things are true because they're written. And you're better off doing what he says rather than the things that you want to do. So ladies, if you feel stupid having a thing on, feel stupid for a bit and see how your prayer life works. And then guys, if you think that you stood on a stage and you're reading your cap and praying prayers and saying you're youthful, stop trying to please men and start trying to please God. It's not my job to judge. But talk to him. Ask him, say, Heavenly Father, uh, Jesus, Jesus gave us the, the map, the example. And he prays the prayer in Luke and I think in Matthew or John. That many of us learn by rote and we forgot to, to look at. And I recommend you unpack it at some point. But it doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have to be loquacious <laughs> it doesn't have to be smart or pretty as long as it's genuine he will hear he will hear and he will respond our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil for thine 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I mean, so be it, by the way. Try and close your prayers. I often find myself leaving open prayers, which can be uh, uh, ambiguous, lead to ambiguity. So I sometimes pray during the day or during the morning or during the evening, whenever, and say, Lord, whatever prayers I have opened, I close them and pray in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be mindful of what you pray for. I'm on a daily worship website, and I do have to go back sometimes and think, like, I've not, I've not remembered what I've prayed earlier in the week, so I might be praying something else which might conflict with that. So try and be mindful, but do have the conversation whenever and wherever it takes you, wherever it strikes you. My coming to Christ. Oh, it was a head on the table moment. I was in a, a mental hospital in my hometown, Southport. I had given up and I put my head on the table and I spoke those words, Lord, I have nothing left to give, nothing. Over to you, I need you, Lord, I need you. I have nothing left. As I spoke those words, somebody, another inmate, inmate's the right word, another client, sat down in the chair opposite. I only saw his knee, I only saw, I was aware of him being there, I just kept my head on the table. He opened a, a prayer mat, a prayer verse, a prayer sheet, I don't know. And we prayed together, and I gave my life to Jesus. <coughs> I think I've spoken about this before, I'll speak about it again. I was broken and I was lost. When I read the words of John Newton, a fellow Liverpudlian, I could say I'm from Liverpool. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. He was sinking on a ship off the coast of Ireland on a slave ship. Waves crashing over, darkness and thundering, creaking and splintering of timbers, the cries of men, screams. And one of those screams was his. Lord! Save my life! Please. I've heard testimony of some people, they're in the middle of road accidents, cars going through the air upside down, and they've made that. One guy, uh, uh, he hasn't even come to Christ yet, and he was stood next to another person in the cab of a wagon on its side after the crash, looking at each other, and they burst out laughing. They knew life, they'd been saved. And he's yet to make the connection to why and how. God is good, and God is abundant, and God is everywhere. He made everything, all things, and you and me. And he has a plan for our salvation, and according to his salvation, he will work that plan out. Nothing will stop that. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, every power and potentate of this world, of this universe, will stand one day before the judgment seat of God, kneeling, and then kneel, and they will say, Jesus is Lord of all. And at that point, God will say one of two things. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Or he'll say nothing. And you can read about that in King Herod, in the book of Mark. It's not the same King Herod from when Jesus was born. This is the King Herod who uh, had the John the Baptist beheaded because John the Baptist pointed out that Herod shouldn't marry his brother's wife. You know, complicated. And they think that our lives are complicated, our family lives. Do read the Bible every now and again.
when Jesus was captured and imprisoned, he was taken to Herod. And Herod desired, he was hungry to see him. He was hungry for exoneration from guilt, from the things that he had done. Jesus never spoke a word to him. That's what we read about in the book of Isaiah, about him being silent before his accusers. Herod had crossed the line. He had done the things that he knew he shouldn't have done. And we don't want to reach that point. We don't want to reach the judgment seat. We don't want to reach the day of atonement. We don't want to reach that day when Jesus will come again, this time riding on the clouds at the head of the heavenly armies, resplendent in all the fullness of his majesty as king of heaven. We don't want to wait till then and say, yes, you're king of heaven. Because he knows it. The best works of my hands, giving out crosses, preaching the word of God, doing things, making stuff, whatever, are as filthy rags to the Lord of all creation, the God that made all this. How could I ever satisfy him? By being a faithful servant, by turning my eyes away when I see those girls, by looking at that car and the reality of, I don't really need it. I'm thankful for the one I've got. And yes, he can still bless. Yes, he can dress you in ways you won't see. Yes, he'll see things and blessings that make you go, that's 10 times better. Julia, when I saw something you spoke, when I spoke to you online the other day, I was going to video game. I'd set my timer as a good person doing stuff that he knows he shouldn't do for half 35 minutes. And I pressed play and I thought, I'll check Facebook when you were on and we talked. And the moment the conversation finished, the alarm went off. And I said to God, that was better than the half an hour's video game. Thank you, God. His blessings are better than anything. His love is better than anything. I look into the eyes of my wife and she looks into mine. We grin, the smiles of the saved, the smiles of people who are in love with each other, smiles of the appreciation of each other's beauty, not just physical. And we both say, I love Jesus more. It is a joy to serve the living God, an honor, a blessing. If more people did it, think of the world we would have. Does this seem good to you? Whoever you are, I was broken and lost in sin, enslaved to drugs and habits, destructive behavior, alcohol, mentalism. I was lost, condemned rightly so, to a death I richly deserve. And yet God in his mercy, in his plan, it's written, it's not just for me. Here you are, my son. When I called to him, it didn't just release, it's not a magic wand. It's not like winning the generation game. Oh, here's all a big bag full of prizes. And at the same time, Jesus took to the cross and died and poured out his blood, was tortured and sacrificed. And in winning it all, in going to heaven, in being ascended, in taken to the right hand of the Father, in being lifted up, he said, here. Here's my Holy Spirit. Here is grace. Here is truth, compassion, mercy. You want fruits to be fruitful? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. The one I can't remember in self-control, gentleness. Do they sound good to you? Or do they sound like the things that you would want for yourself, for your children, for your loved ones, for your family? Then pray, 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 Lord. I need you. My friends and my family, they need you. The lives and loves that I have known, they need you.
I couldn't fix them. I still can't. I can do nothing on my own, nothing without you. You are the Lord of my life. You are the Lord of creation. You are Jesus, the Messiah, God with us. I need you, Lord, to act and to do, to speak life into the lives that are lost, to the dry bones, the valley of dry bones, to speak life eternal. Not that I may be lifted up, that may your name be known, that a people be established, be brought back from the brink of death as you have done in the past, as you did for the children of Israel. Lift them, Lord. Love them. Sorry, forgive me, Lord. You have loved them. You do love them. You poured out your love on Calvary's cross. Help them through your Holy Spirit, Lord. Through your example, through your light, through your life, to hear your voice, to return to you. Lord of all creation, Lord of all things, that they might enjoy the life eternal that they might know the truth, the joy, the hope, and the majesty of serving the living God. All glory and honour to you. All praises to you. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are you white as snow? Are they washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Saviour's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed, are you, in the blood? He poured it out for you. In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. And I didn't deserve it. And I'm sorry I got it sometimes. Are you garment spotless? Are they white as snow? And only sorry in terms that it offends you or denudes my walk or our walk. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. I'm not doing it or saying this and thinking like a reform smoker. I'm better than you. I'm telling you that I'm broken, that I was lost. And if you truly knew me, if you truly knew me before, you would know that this is a better place. And I pray that for you, that you can't have done the things that I did. You can't have gone so far, even though some of you have gone further into other things. 
that he can't forgive you, that his arm can't stretch down and reach you and he can't lift you up, by the scruff of the neck or the skin of the teeth or whatever you want to call it, by the balls if necessary, kicking and screaming to a new life, a new way of looking at things, a new answer, a new pastures, a new walk, a new way, a new covenant, a new understanding, a new blessing, new, 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 a new heart. It's what he gives you straight away. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. You can say that prayer. I know some people, uh, pastors, don't like it because it's like a, it's not the full baptism in water. But you can say that prayer. The man on the cross, the thief, that's all he had. It wasn't time to take him down and to the river and to denoit and dr d douse his head in water. And that's a great hope for some of the people I know. Some of the people that have passed. But what it takes is to say, Jesus, I love you. I have made a complete mess of things. I want to know more of you. I want to come closer to you. I want to give my life to you. Because this one isn't worth so much. Amen. Um, do go on Carpe Crux's uh, website. Uh, there is contact details there. I can send you out crosses. And uh, we can arrange to meet. And I'm sure, you, as well as uh, point two, we did point one, is pray. Point two is also pray for uh, fellowship. And you don't have to go far. God will. If you look for God, God will find you. God's there. He's just like there next to you going, I'm ready whenever you are. He loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. Jesus is sat by the throne of God going, grace, 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 grace. Covers a multitude of sins. He will place your sins, your difficulties, and don't do it to... Do it, just, just pray to him. Pray for direction, find fellowship. You'll be strengthened in fellowship. When you're on your own, again from experience, buff it, buff it, buff it enemy, 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 but we don't know which way's up and um, yeah in that they'll be surrendering some of the stuff and when you do you'll be like laughing and I you know, walking down the roads in India and seeing the cannabis growing shoulder high and laugh, you just laugh and say God you're with me to the end and you know that in overcoming anything can be overcome and even those dark, desperate, treacly subtle tissue, I mean tell you, barbed chains of the enemy even those soul-wrenching, intrinsic, almost intrinsic, they're not intrinsic because they're lies, he's a liar and a deceiver, even those ones can be removed. God's love can be instant in many areas, but it's the gradual stuff that makes you think, I will do this forever, and where you say go, Lord, I will go, where you say, say, I will say, when you say speak, I will speak. And when you say shh, I will. Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh is the name the Jews forgot. Can you imagine? You're entrusted with the sacred name of God, and in speaking God's sacred name is uh, power and authority, dominion, all manner of blessings. And you become so convinced that everyone's going to steal it off you, you hide it, and you hide it so well, you forget it. peculiar people we're all a bit like that we find the good things and the good days and then we stuff them away and I'll say oh, well, I'll save that to some other point don't save and wait in terms of getting right with God don't think uh, maybe next month or maybe next week and you will <coughs> Carpe Crux 
the moment, seize the day, seize Jesus, choose Jesus. Do it now, do it today, because tomorrow might not come. Bosses might knock you down, planes might fall from the sky, fire and brimstone may fall, and Jesus might just appear on that horizon with the heavenly armies. You'd be like, oh, is that today? Just like the note, people outside. Uh, as they are. 120 years that boat was going up. Imagine the people walking past day after day. And if you want to go online, do. There's a guy in the Netherlands built one, and the Seventh day Adventists have built one in America. It's a big boat built to biblical proportions, to God's design. Massive. 120 years walking past going, <laughs> Fool. You're a fool, Noah. It never rained. Some account, it never rained. 120 years plus one day. Is that today? In the middle of your orgy, in the middle of your bottles of wine, in the middle of your cyclic, repetitive, redundant, thrill-seeking, material wealth seeking life is that today the coming of the lord is today there won't be i'll just sweep this underneath the carpet get the stains out don't be fire and brimstone show the love i go to a church one of the churches here it's all fire and brimstone but some people need it we need that rod and staff to be our comfort the rod you know, sometimes, don't spare the rod and spoil the child. Lord, teach me your ways. Because... His... Teaching, his, uh, his way with us... But, you know, as a teacher, a school, school teacher, you know, being soft on children doesn't work. Being soft on me doesn't work, if I'm honest. And people were gentle and kind. Perhaps I needed a bit more rough handling. But I thank God that God is God is God and He knows how to handle everyone. He's the Good Shepherd down his life I might live <coughs> it's not too much to ask every once in a while to ask him Lord come here clip round the ear if I need one or a kick up the backside <coughs> yes if it means lifting me up on my britches and the skin of my teeth it will be painful But better that than the other. Better pluck out your own eye than leave it in and have it take you to death. It's not knowing God. It terrifies me. The thought of not being there. The thought of not having a comforter, a wise counsellor, a friend to talk to. A hand on my shoulder. Uh, amazing grace. Abundant love, warmth. <laughs> I don't know, there are people suffering, there may be people watching this who think, what a conceited get. Oh, look at you. Oh, look at you. You love it, living in a nice place and you've got a nice tie and a car. All right, it's not a jag, but hey, ark at you. I love you and I pray for you. I'm sorry for being conceited. I have suffered. But none of us can suffer like he suffered. None of us can be broken like he was broken. Tortured like he was tortured. Luke was a physician. And he said that he was beaten 
until he was no longer resembled a man or something. I mean, Mel Gibson did a good job in Passion of a Christ, but really, even good CGI couldn't model chunks of flesh being removed and torn until the carcass, the blooded carcass of Christ looked like what it must have done on that day. Still breathing, still blessing, still loving, still weeping, still focused on one thing, the Father, our Father. I've spoken about it before and I'll speak about it again. Jesus' cry on the cross, Lama, Lama. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The end of Psalm 22. And how that psalm was unfolding. And a walk in Christ can be like that. There can be days, moments, where you can see it. The Bible unfolding. It's all an expression of God. It's all been given life by Him. It's all His work, His handiwork. And He's not uh, precocious or conceited in Himself. He's not doing it just so He can get exaltation, that He can be lifted high. It's because of who He is. It's not easy to comprehend. It's because of who he is. He's not vain. He's not cruel. It's the opposite. He's beautiful. And he loves you. And he loves us all. Yes, it was only supposed to be a few. But now it's many. And he still loves us. Because in us he sees his son, Jesus Christ. That's why he can forgive us. It's how he can reach out to us. Whatever our state. As in the parable of the prodigal son. Imagine how he must have smelt. He lived. Squandered all the riches. And he lived in a pigsty. Eating the pods that they fed the pigs the worst place for a Jew if he was Jewish the worst place to, was the cloven footed animals preparing them as food for heathens imagine how he smelled imagine how he looked shambling down the road thinking oh my finery is gone my suffering my sin seeing his father with outstretched arms go, go and get the fatted calf bring him my finest robe put a ring upon his finger bless him bless him and yeah we all have a thought for the brother who'd stay behind and remain faithful made it, the faithful have made it, the good have made it, yes those people are, we know them, I know them, who've chosen Christ from their youth, from their childhood, who've lived in those ways, who've kept their noses clean, who've worked in the fields, laboured hard some of them in places, with the suffering, with the hurt, with the needy, with the broken. I've walked on paths of sin. I'm 
and the pain, a lot of it's been in my mind. I haven't physically been tortured or beaten. I can't imagine how I'd react. believe in him and I will sing his songs if I go down into hell, if I go down into the very pit of hell, into the throat of the enemy, I will sing his songs and declare his name for he is good and he is right and it doesn't change, it can't change, it's immutable, the king of heaven, the God of heaven and earth, the authority in all places because of the sacrifice of his son Jesus Christ. Victor, the winner, the Christ, the anointed one, is Jesus. His name is worth all the suffering and all the struggle, for in the overcoming we will share great news and great story and great tithe and great offering and great testimony that he is the King of of all we can look at, all that we can do, all that we can sing upon and stand upon is His. And in that overcoming, we will make a world greater than any that has gone before. One that sets down its differences, its disputes, its nationalities. One that will reverently come to him who first loved us who first blessed us with life and say Yahweh Yahweh I am home Here I am Humbled by your majesty Covered by your grace so free Here I am Knowing I'm a sinful man covered by the blood of the lamb now i found the greatest love of all is mine since you laid down your life the greatest sacrifice Majesty, Majesty, Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty-handed but alive in your hand Here I stand Humbled by the love you give Forgiven so that I can forgive So here I 
knowing that I'm your desire, sanctified by glory and fire, and now I found the greatest love of all. Your grace has found me just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hands I'm singing majesty Majesty Forever I am changed by your love in the presence of your majesty 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 Your grace has found me just as I am How I pray find you Empty handed but alive in your hands Singing majesty Majesty Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty Number one, pray to him. Number two, find fellowship. It's important to help you strengthen your position and to give you the support you need. You might feel that. Number three, enjoy a life working, walking, living with the Saviour who gave his life, who created all things and who promises you a better place in heaven forever in the company of saints. Hallelujah to the living God. It's a glorious place to be and I pray it into your life. In the name of Jesus, amen.